What are you doing here? I came back to finish what I started. Otis, what are you doing here? I came back for you. I'm gonna be. What's up, YouTube? It's your boy, Mark Dark, and I'm back with another video. If you're new, if you love the shy, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and leave your theories, comments, everything down below. Now today we're going to be talking about The Shy Season 5, Episode 1. This is the recap. Now I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points in this episode. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. And like I told y'all last night in my quick thoughts, early impressions, this was a very good season opener. We got the return of the OG Quentin. We ain't seen him since season one. A lot of the fans was asking what happened to him. Some people thought he was dead. Some people said he was going to come back, but he never showed up. But last night he made his return. And as he told Tracy, he is coming back to finish what he started. So we're going to see exactly what your boy Q is going to be on in season five. I'm glad that we're seeing him and Duda working together. I just can't wait to see how it's all going to end. At the same time, in this episode, man, your boy Papa, he said, you know what? I'm tired of everybody running their mouth about my podcast, about me. I'm going to let the people know exactly how I feel and him and Jake. They went at it, man. So we're going to talk about that as well in this video. And what did y'all think about Emmett and Tiff? Finally, she has told him she doesn't want to be his wife anymore. And I'm glad they kind of just moving on. Like, I don't want to continue to see Emmett trying to fix this relationship. It needs to just end. And I'm glad that we can finally move to the next step. We're going to see what's going to happen down the line. But we already know based off what we've been seeing, based off the past, most likely Emmett and Keisha they're going to hook up. By the end of the season, it is going to happen, in my opinion. And I got a feeling that Tiff, she going to have some, you know, some feelings about that. You know what I'm saying? Because she thinks she can do what she want to do. Everything is cool with her and Rob. So be it. But she ain't going to be cool with Keisha and Emmett, especially after seeing how close her and Keisha have gotten in the last few years. It's going to be some issues when the two actually hook up. That's if it does happen. But I definitely think it's going to happen. They're teasing it. And y'all know how they do. When they tease it early on, eventually it will happen. So we're definitely going to talk about that as well. Now, as I told you guys, I'm going to try my best to focus on all the key points. If I miss anything, you guys let me know down below. So let's begin. What did we see in Season 5, Episode 1? It starts out with a banger. You know what I'm saying? They playing the brat in the background of course, Emmett, he's already clapping those cheeks. And I'm thinking like, man, Emmett and Keisha, they're finally back together. There's no way it's going to start off like this. It got to be something, right? There's no way Emmett is you know, going to be able to just knock this off that easily. But we see all you know other characters like the introduction. We know Kevin and Lene and they're playing video games. Of course, they're late for school. Kevin, I'm going to tell you right now, whenever they do a Little Wayne uh, movie, this kid right here, he needs to play young Lil Wayne because he looks just like him, in my opinion. But as far as the shy, him and Lene, they ain't trying to go to school. They ain't there playing those video games. We know Kevin, he's going to be taking that a little bit more serious um, in this season. Of course, we get Treg, Rashad, and Jake. They having a good old time, having family breakfast. Like I said, this is more just an introduction of all the characters. We haven't seen them in a year. Your boy Papa, he is getting ready for the day. And man, your boy Papa, he was on one this episode. And I'm kind of glad that Papa spoke his mind. I guess that the way that he did it at that pet rally, it got everybody pissed off. But still, I'm glad Papa finally, you know, opened up a little bit more. Now, Jada... We saw her at the very beginning. We can already tell something is on her mind. And we already know Sway, he wants to take this relationship a little bit serious. But she ain't trying to do that. Then we get to Tiffany. She wakes Emmett up. You know, Emmett's having the best dream ever, clapping Keisha's cheeks. But no, it wasn't real. He wakes up. She's talking about, look, I'm leaving. I'm taking EJ with me. I'm going to my mom's spot. I'm pissed off. I'm still upset. I need some time. I mean, this is the same stuff you've been seeing out of Tiff. Since last season, Emmett is still trying to fix things. He's trying to, you know, wonder or figure out what the hell is going on. What can he do? But she needs time. So she ends up leaving, going to her mom's house. And Emmett just, 
you know, he's sitting there dreaming about Keisha. She's talking about, I hope you were dreaming about me, but that wasn't the case. Then we get to the crew, Papa, Lene, Kevin, uh, Gemma, Jake, they're all in the car dropping Gemma off at school. And of course, every time Papa brings up his podcast, everybody gives him some type of slack. We know that Jake has tryouts later on in the day. And Gemma, she's forgotten about all of that. You know what I'm saying? Jake is kind of upset because he's been talking about it all week. Your boy Papa, he was trying to spit game at Lene. He's like, look, I like what I see. Like you and Kevin, y'all like brother and sister. So, you know, I like what I see out of you. What y'all think about that? Y'all think your boy Papa going to try to hook up with Lene um, down the line this season? As I told y'all, Papa, he's speaking his mind this season, at least from the start of it, right? Then we get to your boy Bakari. And once again, whether it's in Power Book 4 Force and whether it's in The Shy, this kid is always in trouble. And in this season, we're going to see a little bit more out of his character. Um, but he's in there fighting at Tracy's community center. And she tries to break up the fight. It is difficult for her to even do that. She already don't even like Bakari as it is for what he did to Ronnie a few seasons ago. So Treg and Rashad, they have to come in and break up the fight. And, you know, make these two dudes say sorry to each other because, man, Bakari was beating the living crap out of this dude. I mean, he was beating him down. Now, Bakari and, of course, this kid right here, they were told that they need to come the very next morning to do some volunteer work. And, you know, maybe they can fix things up. But Bakari, he ain't trying to do that. Of course, he's going to give some, some, some backlash. He ain't just going to agree on any type of terms. But Rashad and Trey let him know, like, look, you're going to do this or it's going to be some trouble for you Rashad don't be playing around Rashad like look y'all can't fight anyway like y'all gonna do what we tell y'all to do or we're gonna have some issues now we know Tracy feels some type of way about Bakari and that's because of what Bakari did to Ronnie he took his life Tracy doesn't like him at all she is telling Treg and Rashad like look you can't save everybody I know it was this kid because when Ronnie got popped I looked up and he was talking about this is for Kooky or whatever. So she knows that Bakari did it. She has these feelings towards him. And, you know, Rashad and Treg was telling her, like, look, he's just a kid. He can change or whatever. They can fix him up and make sure that he's good. We know that that's going to happen this season. But as of right now, and they're looking too good for your boy Bakari. Then we get back to Tiffany. She has returned home. She has went to her mom's spot. She is staying there, her and EJ. But the thing is, when you go back home, you got to follow your parents' rules. And man. Her mom is pretty much treating her just like a kid. She's telling her what she wants her to do. Her mom already doesn't agree with the whole marriage thing, the open marriage and the, some of the things that Tiffany's been up to. Now, Tiffany goes to her room. She got the B2K poster. I mean, it was crazy because as this show was airing, they had the verses with Omarion and Mario. I found that very interesting. But, you know, your girl Tiffany definitely was a B2K fan back in the day. And, you know, besides that, we know Tiffany, she wants to kick it with Rob, which we know later on in the episode, she will go and hang out with him. But this whole thing with Emmett, I'm glad that it came to a conclusion. Hopefully, um, it came to a conclusion in this episode. We're going to see later on down the line in future episodes. Now, Keisha, she is trying to have a new beginning or whatever, a new chapter in her life. She's supposed to go to this university. She's staying on campus. She's taking her kid. Dre is happy for her. Of course, her mom, Nina, has some different feelings about that. But Keisha's like, look, I hate it here. I need to leave. I need to, you know, make a change in my life and do some of the things that I want to do. And that's good. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully that can happen for Keisha. Um, but I want to know what's going to happen between her and Emmett down the line. And speaking of Emmett, Emmett has decided to go to his pops, let his pops know, you know, about some of the things that he's going through with the marriage. He asks his pops about Tiffany. And Darnell tells us exactly what we all been thinking. He said, look, F Tiffany, you know what I'm saying? You need to go ahead and leave that alone and focus on yourself and what you need to be doing. Him and uh, Emmett, they drinking some Hennessy. They kicking it all in their feelings. Your boy Darnell had me cracking up. Once again, he got the Bluetooth phone. Um, of course, he is telling Emmett that he be having dreams too about Emmett's mom, Jada. You know what I'm saying? He was talking about how he was clapping Dom's cheeks. And, you know, in order for him to finish, he started to think about Jada and boom, you know what I'm saying? He finished. Of course, Emmett, he was like, hell nah, ain't no way. He ain't trying to even envision that, right? But Emmett needs to take his pop's advice. I mean, 
probably need to go ahead and leave Tiff alone and focus on what you really want to do, right? And at the same time, we know Emmett really has feelings for Keisha. I've been talking about this for years and years and years. So hopefully in this season, we're able to see that um, later on as these episodes air out. Then we get to Treg and Rashad. They had went to the store, the ring store, to get a ring for Imani. Treg has decided that he wants to take the relationship to the next level. He wants to settle down. The funny thing about this is we all know Imani would not be in this season. It was already announced months ago that she would not be in the season. So I'm thinking like, man, what's going to happen? Are they going to have a new actor that's going to play her or whatever? But we know once we saw it, that was not the case. As I told you, my prediction is Treg will most likely hook up with Duda's god niece. She should be coming on later down the line. I believe her name is Tiara, but we should be seeing more about her character in future episodes. Then we get to your boy Emmett. He has decided to go to Tiff's mom's house. Let Tiff know exactly how he feels, and he is still trying to fix this marriage. Now, I talked about this in my final predictions video in the description, and I stated that Emmett will try to fix the marriage. A lot of you guys was talking about why is Emmett trying to fix this? Well, I don't even know why the dude trying to fix it, but hey, I guess he really loved Tiff and he felt like this was the best way. The dude was all drunk, throwing up and everything. He goes into the house, has a conversation with Tiff, tells her, look, come home. He's trying to fix it. He loves her. Tiff ain't trying to hear any of that. Tiff is like, look, I don't think I really want to be your wife anymore. And I'm glad that she said this because Emmett will continue to try to be with her. Go ahead and focus on other people. You know what I'm saying? And in this marriage, it should have never happened in the first place. We all know this. And now since Tiff told him this, we can see Emmett move in a different route. And I'm glad they did not drag this out for the remainder of the season. So I'm eager to see what's going to happen with Tiff and Rob. And also what's going to happen with Emmett and Keisha. Because you already know that's going to be one of the main topics of discussion this season from the fans. Then we get to Suede and we get to Jada. Now, Jada wants all these different things fixed, her shower head, and Sway is like, look, I want to move in with you, and if I was moving in with you, you know, your shower head will be fixed, but since you don't want me to move in with you, that's not going to be the case. It seems like Sway is trying to take this relationship a little bit more serious, but Jada is like, nah, I'm good, you know what I'm saying? She ain't really feeling that way. She's kind of really thinking about what she wants to do, but we know Jada, she doesn't really want to, you know, take that relationship to that type of level. Then we get back to Tiff and we get to Keisha. As I told y'all, it's going to be funny because we know Tiff and Keisha's relationship, they got real close. You know what I'm saying? They they, they girls. Now, of course, Tiff is hitting up Rob. She want to kick it with him. Um, Keisha, she is trying to figure out how she's going to tell Christian that she wants to break up. And, you know, Christian is a nice dude, but, you know, Christian did allow Keisha to get more comfortable and come out and, you know, fix things in her life because she's been through a lot with everything that happened to her a few seasons ago. Then we get to your boy, Jake. He's at the varsity basketball tryouts. And man, this scene right here had me cracking up. Maisha had me cracking up. She said, is it me or is this dude just flat out trash? Yes, this man was flat out trash, y'all. I mean, I don't know if he was practicing or what he did, but apparently I guess he didn't because he was getting dropped off on that basketball court. This man had no badges if this was nba 2k this man got zero badges right he was getting destroyed out there the coach said look you straight up trash you gotta go you can't be on this team at all you can't even come off the bench you need to go and practice right your girl maisha was talking about it's like hoop dreams all over again man she was out there grilling jake for real now of course Gemma comes at the end and she's trying to have a conversation with jake she's telling him like look you can be good at other things i mean you don't have to go to the nba or whatever like look there's other things that you can do of course jake is telling her she has other options so she can do other things but jake is trying to find something that he is good at he is pissed off and he kind of, you know, was disrespectful to Gemma, talking about he doesn't want that little cookie cake that she had. I mean, he was pissed off, which made Gemma even more upset because the way that he expressed his feelings toward her. We already know this old Jake and Gemma thing will be taken a little bit more serious this season. But as of right now, they got a small little issue. But I do believe that their relationship is going to be okay. I believe Jake is going to apologize or whatever, and they're going to fix that little small issue that they got. But man... Your boy Jake was getting dropped off. Then we get back to Emmett. He's in the back singing at Carl Thomas in his feelings. Of course, Treg has to come back there. Like, look, dude, do you need a hug? Of course, 
Emmett tells him, like, look, me and Tiff is done for. They hug it out. Next thing we know, your boy, Bakari, he comes out of nowhere. And he busts his um, Treg's G-Wagon, y'all. A brick through that window. I already know Treg was pissed off. He was pissed off. And he's like, all right, little kid. You want to play around? I guess I'm going to have to put these paws on you. He goes outside. He's about to take this dude's life. I mean, he beat the crap out of Bakari, right? And the whole time, Bakari, he's setting all this up to make sure that Treg is on camera just to make it seem like Treg is a bad person or whatever, trying to, you know, tear his character down, knowing that Treg is a positive figure in the community. Some of the things that he's been doing for the community has been positive, right? Trying to uplift people. But Bakari knows this, so this is a you know little strategy for him to try to get back at Treg. But I don't believe it's going to work. Well, I guess it kind of did, especially at the end of the episode when Imani said, I'm good. You know what I'm saying? After seeing what Treg done to Bakari. We're going to talk more about that at the end of this video. Then we get to Jake and Papa. Of course, Papa is telling him like, look, did you think you can just join the basketball team just because you're a black kid from Chicago? Like, did you even practice? Like, what's going on? You know, they start arguing. Of course, Jake is talking about your podcast. It's just pretty much just flat out trash. You don't talk about nothing. So once again, Papa has to hear about his podcast and the negativity that people have against it. And he's pissed off about it. Him and Jake just continue to argue, whatever. Of course, Papa's like, look, if you listen to my podcast, you can take some, some things from it and you can use it for yourself. You know what I'm saying? It's not bad to get advice from your friends or people, whatever. That's the problem. And he states that we're just as sick as our secrets. So Papa was making some points, right? And they just had an argument. Of course, Kevin, he ain't trying to hear any of that. He's trying to play his game. He's like, look, both of y'all shut up. I'm trying to focus right now. But we know it ain't over between Papa and Jake. It's just begun. Then we get to Keisha. Keisha has decided to send Christian a voice message, pretty much breaking up with him. She's thanking him for, you know, helping her fix her life. You know, Christian made her more comfortable as far as dating again and then getting out there, meeting people. And he's a good dude, but she's waiting for his response later on in the episode. Now, Tiffany, she has contacted Rob. They're FaceTiming. She's like, look, she's tired of being at her mom's spot. Of course, Rob is telling her just to come there. He doesn't care about if EJ is with her or not. He just wants her to come there so he can support her. So we know that Tiff, you know, at first she was kind of hesitant, but we know down the line she's going to go over Rob's and kick it with him. Then we get back to Jada and Suede. And, you know, Jada is pretty much telling Suede, like, she's cool being alone as far as at the house. Um, she didn't know how much she really enjoyed it. And Suede is pissed off because Suede wants to take this relationship to the next level. And Suede was like, look, so I guess you just cool with me being your task rabbit. So Sway is like, screw all that. You want me to sit up here, come in, give you these massages, clap those cheeks, fix stuff, and then just leave. He ain't trying to have that. He is trying to really take this relationship to the next level. But no, Jade is the OG. She's cool being by herself. She ain't really trying to be doing all that. And at the end of the day, it takes the right person to be with Jada. And unfortunately, Suede is not that person. Yes, he's fun to be with, but Jada has a type, which we know for real, Darnell is that person that she probably wants to be with. But that's going to be a very interesting um, relationship if they do decide to really get back together this season. Then we get to Rashad. He is showing Treg the video of what he done to Bakari. Of course, it's blowing up. People have a lot of negative things to say about Treg. Treg is pissed off like, man, ain't no way. So, of course, they have decided to go and try to track down Bakari and fix this and, you know, address this dude because we know he's going to be a problem. And if he continues to do what he's doing, somebody really is going to get hurt down the line. Now, we get to Marcus. He's still recovering from that beating that Duda gave him last season. We saw him with the cane, but we know Gemma, she is taking a mental health day because she's in her feelings because of what happened with her and Jake. Now, he is telling his daughter some good advice, in my opinion, telling her that, look, if Jake is going to continue to disrespect you and do some of the things that he's doing, maybe you should step away. Maybe you should give him some time and give yourself some time. And, you know, maybe he will, you know, fix the things that he is doing. You can't allow a person to walk over you. I didn't raise you like that. And, you know, hopefully, you know, your relationship with Jake can actually improve. So Jim is going to take her father's advice and most likely Jake is going to apologize and try to fix things between him and Gemma. 
Then we get back to your boy Papa and Jake the pep rally. Man, once again, your boy Papa had me cracking up. And he came at Jake real hard. He said, look, we got to take a moment of silence for my boy Jake. He's still here, but his basketball career is pretty much dead. Talking about how he fell. No one pushed him. He was getting destroyed at basketball practice or whatever, tryouts. I mean, he was pretty much telling him, like, look, this was what happens when you don't have, a, you know, a positive black male in the household. Jake was pissed off. He said, look, your dad ain't nothing. Of course, Papa came back at him and said, at least I got a dad. And Papa was feeling himself. Papa was like, look, maybe if, you know, you all had, a, you know, a positive black male in the household, y'all will all be better at life. And everybody took that to heart. Lene took that to heart. Everybody in the crowd took it to heart. And they all was throwing stuff at Papa. I mean, he was doing his thing when it was just him and Jake. But once he said everybody would be all right if y'all had a positive black male in your household, they took it to the heart. And of course, they took their feelings out on Papa. But as of right now, Papa and Jake, they're not on good terms in season five. But I am glad that Papa is opening up a little bit more, letting people know exactly how he feel and not just sitting back, allowing people to run their mouth to him no more. So we're going to see how it's going to end as the season continues to air out. But what do y'all think about your boy Papa in episode one? Then we get back to Bakari. Treg and Rashad have found him. And they're telling him, like, look, you need to change your ways. You need to stop doing what you've been doing. Of course, Rashad is telling him he knows how it is to be him because he used to be him. Of course, Bakari ain't trying to hear it. He's like, look, you don't know how it is to be me. Then your boy Treg is like, look, I know how it feels to catch a body. Like, dude, like, you don't even have a clue, right? Now, of course, Treg tells him, like, look, all that weed smoking ain't going to change the fact. You're still going to feel that pain for what you've done. And, you know, you need to change your ways, bro. And you need to come to the center tomorrow. Rashad tells him, you better be there tomorrow or he's going to come looking for him. We know that Rashad will help change, with the help of Treg, will help change Bakari's ways. But as I told you guys, it's not going to be easy. Bakari, he ain't going to stop. In this episode, we didn't see Bakari pull that strap out on Emmett yet. But it's going to happen. I thought it was going to happen. I talked about it in my final predictions. It has not happened yet, but it is happening down the line, in my opinion. But what do y'all think about your boy Bakari so far um, in episode one? Then we get to Jada and Darnell. Man, another funny scene. Now, Jada has called Darnell to help fix the shower head. Of course, she loves it. Darnell's like, look, what else you need me to fix? The two end up making out. We can feel the chemistry. Darnell's like, screw this. I am trying to clap those cheeks. What is you trying to do today, right? Now, Jada has to stop. She's like, look, we can't do this, you know, because we have, you know, some situations going on. You got Dom. I got Sway, you know. Darnell's like, look, F those kids. You know what I'm saying? I called Dom right now. Like, I really feel like you are the one that I let go. So, Darnell, he is taking his own advice that he gave Emmett. Like, look, he is trying to fix this. He is really trying to be with Jada. Jada was hesitant, but I think as the season continues to air out, the two will most likely hook up. And I want to know how Emmett is going to feel about that. His parents hook him back up. Y'all saw how he, you know, he was acting when Darnell was telling him that he still has dreams about his mom. The dude was tripping out. So I can't wait to see if they do hook up, how Emmett is going to take it. Then we get to Kevin and Lene. They go to the little video game tournament. Kevin goes in there. He dominates. You know, Kevin, he's a straight up beast in these video games, right? I don't know what they was playing. It seemed like a fake Grand Theft Auto made up type of multiplayer game, but we know that this game made Kevin have some PTSD. We see some flashbacks of Kevin when he popped Ronnie in season one. So it seems like he is having some mental issues, which we know as this season airs out, Kevin will continue to have these problems until he actually addresses them. But Kevin does win the little game or whatever, and he dominates. We know Kevin will be taking this serious. As I told you guys about what to expect for Kevin, his parents ain't going to like some of the things that he's doing when it comes to these video games. Then we get to Keisha. She gets the response back from Christian. And Christian, man, he ain't even tripping for real, man. He, he, he really was a nice dude. He respects what Keisha has decided to do as far as, you know, focus on the things that she needs to focus on, school, her son. And she thanks, of course, she thanked Christian for helping her, you know, feel more comfortable and everything like that as far as the relationship and just trusting people in general. And Christian, as he stated, 
he was a good dude. And he tells Keisha, like, look, the next time that you meet a good dude, hopefully you give him that same respect and you give him a chance. And, you know, just letting you know that all good dudes ain't bad or whatever. And, you know, hopefully you will never forget me and the things that I've done for you. So, Christian, man, shout out to you, man. Um, hopefully everything is good with him. I know a lot of people was asking about his character. But we thought that something was going on with him last season, at least me. But it turns out that the dude really was just a good dude. And, you know, he wasn't trying to screw Keisha over at all. Then we get to Rob and Tiffany. Tiffany has decided to go over there with EJ. She's going to stay with Rob. She's tired of staring, staying at home with her moms, right? Rob is making her real comfortable. He ain't trying to press or whatever, trying to, you know, act like he's trying to really clap those cheeks. But I guess these two are going to become closer in this season. And from the looks of it, it seems like Rob actually likes her. And Tiffany likes him, as I told you guys. He's going good right now. But how would Tiffany feel once... I believe, you know, Emmett and Keisha does decide to get back together or hook up. That's what I'm waiting for, but we're going to see. Now, early on in the episode, we know that Treg asked Emmett, can he use a spot to propose to Imani? Now it is time to propose, right? Now, Imani's friend, Latrice, she comes in and she lets Treg know that, look, Imani's going to stay in St. Louis. She saw the video of you and what you did to Bakari and she's decided to stay there and take some time and to think about what the hell is going on. It's crazy because we know what Bakari did to Imani. You guys remember last season, Bakari pretty much disrespected the hell out of Imani. I mean, calling her names and all this stuff, telling her that, look, I know you a dude and all this. I mean, he was dogging her out. So for her to have these feelings to Treg, I don't know about that, you know. I was hoping maybe he can have a conversation with her at least. I mean, but she's not going to be in the show. We know this. I told you guys, Imani is not casted for season five at all. So they're going to go a completely different approach. And we're going to see what Trey is going to do down the line. And if he's going to hook up, what do this God needs if that is going to be the case. But he was in his feelings, man. Your boy Trey was upset because he got the ring and it did not play out the way that he thought it was going to play out. Now, Tracy's at the house and she's watching the classic Waiting to Exhale. And I'm thinking like, okay, I know Duda is going to come and, and approach her because from the description, we already knew Duda was going to be in this episode. The question is, who would this, you know, old face be? The other old face, right? And the other old face is the OG Quentin, right? This is Jason's dad. I know a lot of people was asking who is Quentin? Well, if you're a fan of the show, you already know who he is. I shouldn't even have to explain to you who, who the hell Q is. This is the OG. Played by Stephen James. Everybody wanted to know where he went, right? Some people said that he was dead. We know Duda said he was taken care of and stuff like that a few seasons ago. But no, he was taken care of, all right? He just ain't dead. You know what I'm saying? He is still here in the flesh. And that is good. I'm glad that the OG character has returned. And Tracy is tripping out, like, why are you even here? And then, you know, Q tells her, look, I'm here to finish what I started. And then she asks, Duda, why are you here? You know, and Duda said, well, I'm here for you. I came back for you. So now we got two OGs. We got Q and we got Duda. And they're back in Chicago. And it seems like they back with a vengeance. We know Duda is trying to change his image. He's going to use his God needs for that. We know that Q talking about he's back to finish what he started. We know when he came back, he was trying to fix up certain things in the neighborhood. He didn't like how certain things was going. Dirty cops and stuff like that. We know what he did to the dirty cop that took out his son, Jason. He took care of that, right? And as he stated in season one, he handles shit. That's what he does. So in this season, as he stated, because someone asked who the hell is he? He said, I'm the boogeyman. We're going to see what your boy uh, Q is going to be on in season five of The Shy. As I told you guys, I'm glad that he's back. I can't wait to see more of his character. But overall, this was a solid season opener. It was actually better than I expected it to be. This was actually a good season opener, man. And if this is any indication of what we're going to get for the rest of the season, you know, I'm very excited for what's to come. But you guys let me know, man, what did you think about The Shy season five, episode one, titled Overnight Celebrity? What do you think is going to happen next? We will be talking about the this season trailer. And, you know, of course, once they release the actual trailer for episode two, we're going to talk about that as well. But thank you guys once again for, you know, supporting your boy for another season of The Shy. And, you know, hopefully the season 
is, you know, a banger. But thank you guys for all the love, all the support, and I will catch y'all on the next one. But let me get up on out of here, man. It's your boy, Mark Dark. I'm out. Peace.